Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at covalent bonding. By the end of this lesson then, you should be able to identify compounds that are covalent, draw dot and cross diagrams for covalent compounds, and work out the formula of covalent compounds. So let's go and look at some examples. How do we identify covalent compounds? So, just to look at a couple, here we have hydrogen, H2 is covalent, chlorine, Cl2, we'll be looking at in a little while, is covalent, and also CO2, which is carbon dioxide. All of those are covalent compounds. If we look at our periodic table again, then all of these we'll find, so our hydrogen, well, this exists at the top, it's a slight oddity, it's actually on the right hand side of the staircase, carbon here, and here is oxygen, and all of our covalent compounds then exist on the right hand side of our staircase, and are non-metals, and not really included group zero, because they are noble gases, they're inert, although some with a lot of work such as xenon can form covalent compounds, but generally on the whole they don't form covalent compounds. So our rule for covalent compounds are two or more non-metals which are chemically bonded. Let's go and look at some examples of how we would draw dot and cross diagrams then. Here then is our first example. We have hydrogen. Now, in the outer shell and our complete electron configuration for hydrogen, we have one electron. Now I can draw those. I'm going to draw them on this left hand hydrogen here as a circle across and on this one as a circle. To get a full outer shell, there's, remember, two electrons in the first shell to make it full. Well, they could transfer, that would be like ionic, but instead what happens is they share. So we overlap them together, and then we count the shared electrons for each atom. So let's just count these up. I'll do those in a different colour. So the hydrogens on the left hand side here, we've got the circle and the cross. We count both the hydrogens. That has two electrons, and so has a full outer shell. And then let's look at this one on the right hand side. Here. Well, I've got the cross and the circle, they're sharing the electrons, so they both have two electrons in their outer shell, and so stable, they form a covalent bond. That covalent bond can also be drawn as a single line, so I can draw my hydrogen here as a single line, showing the shared pair of electrons. The formula, then, is... H2, and that describes there is hydrogen atoms and the little two, meaning there's two of them bonded together. And the reason that they bond is that there is a strong attraction between the shared electrons and the nuclei of the bonding atoms. So there is a description of our covalent bond. We'll have a look at some more examples now. Let's have a look at chlorine then. So chlorine has got the electron configuration, it's got 17 protons, so it's 17 electrons. Two, two, eight, seven. Now when we're drawing these, we're only going to draw the outer electrons. So I'm going to start with this left hand chlorine, I'm going to put in here seven crosses for the 
chlorine there and you see I generally put them in pairs and that's because covalent bonds occur in pairs so if I put them together in pairs it's more obvious which ones I need to share we can see now that there are one electron down and they each want to share so these two here share together in a covalent bond and I'll draw this time the chlorines one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here we have the one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So if we count up the electrons for each chlorine atom, and start with the one on the left with the blue crosses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blue crosses, and one red circle, that means we have a total of eight electrons in that outer shell and then if we move now to the chlorine on the right hand side there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven red circles and one blue giving me a total of eight electrons so a full outer shell. Again because we now have two chlorine atoms we can say that this is Cl2 and we get the formula Cl little 2 and we could also write the chlorine with a single line that denotes the shared pair of electrons showing two electrons. Again the reason that we have the bond is that there is a strong attraction between the shared electrons of the nuclei shared electrons and the nuclei of the bonding atoms. So there's our chlorine. This time then we're going to look at water. So water is slightly different. We've got two different elements. We've got hydrogen, which as we've seen before has got one electron in its outer shell. And then we've got oxygen, which has got the electron configuration 2,6. We'll only deal with the outer shell electrons. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. This time then, the oxygen wants to get two electrons to complete its outer shell, and the hydrogen wants to gain one. So each of the oxygen, each of the hydrogens shares its electrons with the oxygen. And we'll put oxygen here in the middle then and hydrogen either side, because we had a choice to make this time. The hydrogen is going to share its electron, and the hydrogen on the right is going to share its electron, and the oxygen is going to share one of its outer electrons with the hydrogen, it's going to share its other outer shell electrons with this hydrogen on the right, and that leaves four, one, two, three, four electrons for the oxygen. If we count up this time then, this hydrogen on the left, it's got the blue cross and the red circle of electrons, so that's got two, it's got a complete outer shell. The hydrogen on the right here, it's got the red cross and the blue, sorry, the blue cross and the red circle, so that's got two electrons. And if we count up the electrons around the oxygen, we've got the one, two, three, four, five, six red circles, and then we've also included the two blues that it's sharing, so this also has eight electrons. Again, each atom now has a full outer shell of electrons. We can redraw our covalent compound with single lines if we want to represent the shared pair of electrons. Water, H2O, is normally drawn in this sort of V-shape. It really is a V-shape. It's not a linear molecule, i.e. in a line. And that's to do with uh, the shape of the molecule. And you'll see that when you do the A-level course. Again, just to remind ourselves why we get the bond occurring. You see at the top we've got the 
attraction between the shared electrons and the nuclei of the bonding atoms. The Okay, this time we've got methane. We'll look at the crosses on carbon. Carbon has got an electron configuration of 2,4. So we have four electrons in the outer shell of the carbon. Hydrogen, we've seen before, has only got one. That means carbon wants to share four of its electrons in order to get up to eight, and hydrogen wants to share one of its electrons and so each of the hydrogen atoms shares one electron, like so, overlapping. And the carbon, the red crosses here, share with the hydrogens. So if we now count up each in turn, the carbon has got the red and the black spots on each one, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The carbon's happy. Each hydrogen now shares its red electron, the red cross, with the black carbon, so each having two. Again, we can draw the covalent bonds, single covalent bonds here. There's single lines between the atom the carbons and the hydrogens. And our reason again for bonding. This time then we're going to look at oxygen which has got the electron configuration of 2, 6. It's got 8 protons, 8 electrons. So I'm going to put these in as crosses. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So each oxygen wants to gain two electrons, so must share two electrons with another oxygen atom, leaving four out. And the other oxygen also going to share two electrons, because it wants to gain two, and it has then four electrons. This time then, each oxygen atom has eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because it's sharing two. And it's now formed two covalent bonds with one atom. In other words, it's sharing four electrons in total. Two electrons from each oxygen atom. This time we can draw this as a two lines between two oxygen atoms and this is called a double covalent bond. So double covalent bond. That's because we're sharing four electrons, two from each atom. The final one then that we're going to look at today is carbon dioxide. We've seen this one before, both atoms so far. So carbon is 2, 4. Oxygen is the electron configuration 2, 6. Again, we're only going to draw the outer shell electrons. I'll do the oxygen ones as red balls or dots. We've got six of those, and we've got four on the carbon. The carbon, therefore, wants to share and gain four electrons, but it only has two oxygens, so it has to share two electrons with one oxygen on the right there. It has to share two electrons the one on the left. That's all of its outer shell electrons. The oxygen wants to gain two electrons, so it's going to share two with the carbon, and because it's got six electrons in its outer shell, it's going to have four left over. And on the right hand side, the carbon's going to share two with the oxygen. 
and this time again the oxygen has got four left over. What that means is carbon dioxide forms two double covalent bonds with oxygen, one on the right there and one on the left. Again, as we've seen with all of these, there's one carbon atom and two oxygens, so we write the formula, a single carbon followed by oxygen with a little two to describe two oxygen atoms. Just to recap, then covalent bonding is between two or more non-metals. This is a sharing of electrons. And you have a pair of electrons in a covalent bond. And the covalent bond is a strong attraction between the shared electrons and the nuclei of bonding atoms. That's the end of the lesson and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.